Okay, implicit differentiation. We are pretty good at this. I'm going to jump right into it. Um, so you have a curve, and they say show that the derivative equals. All right, so when they say show or verify or whatever, they're basically wanting you to, this is the answer, they're giving you the answer, they want you to show that you could get that answer. So you have to show every step and pretend that you don't have that answer yet, okay? So for A, I start off with the function itself, the equation that they give you, and then for each part, I get the derivative, so 2x squared, 8y, y prime, you can write y prime or dy over dx, it does not matter. The derivative of a constant is zero. And then 3xy is a product. So the three, you leave, x times the derivative of y plus the three, you leave, y times the derivative of x. If you want to factor out that three and do the product rule with xy, that's fine. You would, at the end, eventually, multiply the three out, distribute it, and then you get the same thing. So that is one point for doing this correctly, implicit differentiation. And then to finish that part off, y primes get isolated on the left side, everything else goes on the right. And then your y prime gets factored out, and you divide everything by that. And you have your fraction, which looks the same as what they wanted, so we're happy. Done. Okay. So the reason they give you this is actually for the next part. The next part says... Show, again with the show, okay, show that there is a point P with X coordinate 3. So they're telling you already the X is 3, at which the line tangent to the curve, so the tangent line at that point is horizontal. Okay, so that means that the tangent line is supposed to have a horizontal slope. That means, and I'm going to write it nicely because when they say show and there's all this stuff going on, I'm not exactly sure what they want, but I'm going to write everything out that I know to prove uh, what I'm trying to find. So for B, I wrote first, and I literally copied from the problem, the line tangent to the curve at P is horizontal, and I think about it for a second, when the derivative equals zero, because the derivative is the slope at that point. So horizontal means zero slope. Okay, so from there, all right, uh, I look at what they gave me. See, this is why they gave me this. Just in case I couldn't do part A, I can still do part B based on what they gave me. So if the slope equals zero, that means that this equals zero. If this equals zero, then the numerator equals zero. If I were to set the denominator equal to zero, then I would not have a horizontal slope. I would have a vertical slope. And that means y prime would not exist. So what I want is a horizontal slope. I set the top equal to zero. I solve for y or x, it doesn't really matter, eventually you're going to solve for y, and then they say with x coordinate 3, so that's why right here I said, okay, this is y, but when my x is 3, I plug in, I get 2, so y equals 2, so at x equals 3, my horizontal tangent gives me y equals 2, so this is the point, point 3 comma 2 should be on that curve. Okay, show that there is a point. I'm going to make sure. This is what I found using my horizontal slope. I found y equals 2. I'm going to show that there's a point P that is on the curve as well. So right here I did that on the very bottom. So that is on the curve as follows. So what I did is I used my original equation that they gave me. This is the curve. I plugged in 3 comma 2, and then 25 equals 25 is a true statement. So somehow you have to verify that 3 comma 2 works in the original curve. Okay, so that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 points total for A and B. Okay, for part C, it says find the second derivative at point P that you just found for part B. Okay, so second derivative at two comma, or three comma two, okay? Um, does the curve have a local max, local min, or neither? Justify your answer. All right, all right. First part is second derivative, okay. So second derivative. 
My second derivative, okay, well, this is the first derivative. My first derivative is a fraction. My second derivative, then, I would use my quotient rule. So what is my quotient rule? It is the best. It is low d high less high d low denominator squared below, right? Low d high less high d low denominator squared below. So rhymes, we're good. So then, slowly, we write it out. This right here is two points, just writing it out correctly. And then you plug in your 3 comma 2 that you found in the other part. So you plug in 3 comma 2, 3 for the x, uh, 2 for the y, and then also y prime uh, you know as well because y prime is 0. So you can plug in 0 for y prime. See, that's why it's 0. Okay. And then you solve for y double prime, and you get negative 2 over 7. All right. Uh, what else? So I had to find that. Yes. And then does the curve have a local max, local min, or neither? Okay, so this is the second derivative. The second derivative has to do with, let's think, oh, concavity. Okay, so I'm going to state because this is justify your answer. Okay, so at point 3, comma 2, you know that y prime equals 0. Okay, so there's a horizontal slope. And y double prime is negative. So you can write that out if you want. y double prime is negative. Therefore, and I'm just rewriting this, the graph of y has a horizontal tangent line. I'm going to be specific. The graph of y has a horizontal tangent line, which is a slope of 0. And y is also concave down at that point. So if you have a horizontal tangent line and the curve is concave down, it's going to look something like this. I drew this just to show you. So the curve is concave down, and there's a horizontal tangent line, which means that that point, 3, 2, is a local maximum. It goes up on the left, down on the right. It must be a local max. So there's my justification. All right, good luck, and that's it.